Good morning, guys, and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. We got another early morning edition of morning prayer. Actually, been up for a little while. Oh, I don't know why I'm waking up so early, but I don't let it bother me anymore like I used to. Excuse me. It used to be I get so frustrated getting up, waking up too early. Go to bed, exhausted, and get up super early. It's like, why did I get up so early? I got to the point now where I don't, I don't even worry about it anymore. Not even a factor, not even an issue. I'm just keep moving forward. And later on, take a nap. I don't know. Weird. There's times where I get woken up and it's like, hey, why am I awake? And it, it would be like 45 minutes after I fell asleep or an hour after I fell asleep. I don't know. It's weird. Could be the Lord. I don't know. So you guys remember. Oh, excuse me. You guys remember we're on the sevens. And this morning is going to be Psalm 57. Prayer for safety from enemies. And, of course, you know, we guys, you guys know we've done all these songs before. But I think in this new light that we're looking for the message contained within it is compared to the other sevens. It's going to change. A little bit of what the applicability of what what's being said in here it's been a lot of fun going through these this way and seeing the different messages that are coming out i'm really curious to see what comes out of this one doing all the sevens like this we shall see all right let's get right into some prayer father we come before you this morning in the name of jesus christ to give you praise honor and glory the praise honor and glory is yours how are we giving you something that it's already yours? But we we do that and we give thanks to you. We can't do what we do without you. We can't make the decisions that we make without your guidance, without you showing us. You gave us free will. We were able to make choices according to our likes and dislikes, according to our desires. But... In order for us to make the right one, the one that takes us to you, we need you for that. And you're always there waiting for us to make that decision, giving us everything we need to make that decision. You've given us everything we need to follow you. We don't lose, we don't lose rewards or even our inheritance by not living up to your standard. It's by our choices. We choose to do something that takes us away from you. Even as Christians. Even as believers. And you know all this because you know that every choice is going to have its own series of consequences that go along with it. But you're waiting to see which one we make. That's something that's intimate. And that's something that I, I love about you and about how you do all this. Is that you already know all the choices and you know all everything that goes along with each choice. You're just waiting to see what choice we make. You're waiting to see if we see it. And you give us everything we need to see it. But you want to see what we are going to do. And I think that's, that's something, that's a facet of us that you really appreciate and look at and focus on and, and really want to get to know is... Why do we make the decisions that we make and what leads us to push towards these different decisions and how do we respond to the consequences of that decision, good or bad? Because it's, it's, sometimes it's very simple. It's all driven by flesh. Sometimes it's very intricate. When we're contemplating things about you, contemplating your word, contemplating the future, contemplating where we stand, and like Jesus said, if we do it like a child does it, we're blessed and the, and the kingdom of heaven is ours. So we don't make decisions as Christians. If we're walking right, we don't make decisions based on calculated choices. We read your word and what does it tell our heart? And then we react. And if we do that, we make the right decision almost every single time because that's what kids do. Kids read for what it says. See Dick and Jane run. 
What's Dick and Jane doing? They're running. Well, how, how do we know they're running? We see it. Simple. And that's how it's all. And it's, it's just, it's so, it's so many people want to overcomplicate something you purposely made simple. And I think that may be why. I think that may be why, uh, why they did the thing with the, so many churches did the thing with the money, making money the issue and stuff like that is because they figured if they overcomplicated it, people would come to them looking for the right answers because they couldn't understand it because the general consensus was it was overcomplicated. Too complicated for us to understand. That's why most churches don't go through the book of Revelations in detail. And that's a book we need to be going through in detail. There's a blessing contained in that book. Consequently, there's also a curse contained in that book. But see, we know this because we read your word. And it's up to us to make the decision. It's up to us to choose. You lay all the choices out before us, it's up to us to pick one. And you don't deny us any choice either. All choices are open to us. We have the, we have the, uh, the blessing of grace. We have the law of liberty. We're free to choose any of these choices. Salvation is yours. But we can choose how we enter heaven. It can be with grandeur or it can be with no fanfare at all. The way this world is today and the way things are going on today, now more than ever, we need to simplify what your word is saying. Make it super relatable to real life. Because that is what's going to connect with the most people. Something that applies to their life. Something that makes it specific to them. And Father, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take hundreds of years of overcomplication and, and hundreds of years of twisting and turning and, and trying to unravel a little bit of it. Just a little bit. I know I can't do it all. To, to help people understand how your word applies in their lives so that they'll start to see the choices set before them and go, I'm going to choose this one because this one takes me closer to God. So Father, we thank you for giving us that free will and that ability to do that. We thank you for showing us the choices that we have, all the choices, good ones, bad ones, things that will help us, things that won't help us. I love, I love what you're doing. I love how you're doing it. I love the, the way all this is coming together. It's super, super awesome. And I never get tired of, of us learning new things. And that it, the more we learn, the simpler it gets. I had someone tell me recently that it's not about simplicity. It's not that simple. There's much more to it than that. There is much more to it. But we don't have to look at it from a complicated standpoint. And when we overcomplicate things, it just, it isolates people. It drives people away. It causes a wall to be built up. And it, it doesn't help the situation. That's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm trying to, trying to, to help everyone understand. I'm trying to give them what you've given me. So Father, I thank you. Thank you so much. This morning, I'd like to pray Psalm 57. We are on the sevens and uh, already seeing a message come up, and I'm really curious to see what message comes out of this one. I think it's going to be pretty cool. This one is prayer for safety from enemies. Be merciful to me, O oh God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge. Until these calamities have passed. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would have swallowed me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men. 
who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it they themselves have fallen, Selah. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations, for your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. i got to throw a hearty amen on that. And in here we see a little bit of a little mention of the rapture. A little hint at it. How many more times can we sing your praises and, and speak of the amazing works that you're doing? A thousand times, a thousand times. And more. And understanding these things and knowing these things that you're doing. Being aware of them, seeing them with our own eyes. It, it makes us understand what you're doing, where you're coming from, what you're feeling towards us. It makes us understand how powerful you are and the plan you have for mankind. Not for evil and destruction, but for truth and salvation. It's just up to us to choose it. This is understanding. Knowing you, proclaiming you, fosters understanding. Out of Psalm 34, 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. And you do. We do and you do. We have many afflictions, but you do deliver us out of all of them. Now, we study your word to learn what these afflictions mean and why we go through them and what they apply to, how they apply to us. We see in your word the benefit in these afflictions. It is only painful for a time, and then all is changed. By your word, we understand how these things work, and we sing your praises and glorify you because we know you are taking the negative this world throws at us and turning it into a positive, turning it into something good because we suffer for you, and we suffer for the word, and we suffer for our Lord. So I don't deny the sufferings anymore. I glory in them. Yes, I suffer. I have pain. Yes, I struggle. But there's no negative in my eyes anymore because I've read your word. I understand what you're doing here. Not to a greater degree, to a lesser degree, but I see it. And I believe it. And I trust you. So I will sing your praises. I will announce your works to the world. I will tell people the reason why you suffer is because he's showing you powerful by showing himself his power through you in your sufferings. How are you able to get up every morning? God. How are you able to preach the word every morning? God. How are you able to pray every day? God. How are you able to keep to open your eyes and look out and wonder? What is God going to have me do today? That's God. Our Father, you are doing a work in everybody. Bringing them up out of the miry pit. Standing us up in the light. For everyone to see us and for us to see everyone. And then sending us out. It is only by your power that we can do this. It is only by your grace that we exist at all. It is only by your great love that we have salvation. And we know this word, understand this word, and preach this word. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great, great love. Thank you for this opportunity that we have, all these opportunities to come together in prayer, to do what we are doing, and to enjoy what we are doing, and to have the peace that comes from obeying your word. The peace in our lives that comes from listening to you and doing it. Not just saying we do it, but doing it. 
You've poured out your blessings on us tenfold. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all that you're doing and what's about to happen. Thank you for giving us a chance to stand before you and worship you. A chance to choose you. It is in Jesus' name we pray, glorify, and worship you today. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. A little short and laid back. I'm still waking up. My, my brain isn't working right. But I, I actually am really coming to a place where I'm enjoying when I get woke up in the morning. I watch a video uh, from someone else. In fact, I just watched one this morning, posted it on the community tab before I did this video, and uh, stirs me up and gets me going, gets me thinking, and uh, puts new revelations in my head. And I'm like, oh, hey, anyway, that's what this is applying to this. And uh, in most cases, it sets me up for something later in the day. Later today, uh, in fact, at noon today, the original Isaiah 1 video is going to pop up. I already got it uploaded. I just got it set to up to go public today, and I'm gonna try to do a a chapter of Isaiah every day, and uh, so we can go through this book. There's a lot in this book. I mean, a lot. So I want to go. I want to go through it because I think we're gonna learn a lot from it. And not a lot of people dig deep into Isaiah. See, these bigger books like this are scary to a lot of people because they're so complicated. If I get to a, something I don't know about, I just keep on reading. We'll come back to it later. I'm not scared to go through these scriptures because I love his scripture. And if I misunderstand something or I'm wrong, we'll go back and fix it. If I don't understand it, we'll just keep on going. He'll show us what, what we need to know. He does it every time. I love you guys very much. I pray you guys have a great day. I pray you guys have an amazing day. And I'll see you guys in the next video.